we're gonna science the shit out of some lightsabers. What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today we're doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be sciencing the shit out of lightsabers. And not just any lightsaber, Kylo Ren's lightsaber. And I mean the term science fictionally. You know, science fiction, yes? Now of course we all know lightsabers unfortunately are real. They're a prop, they're a special effect. But imagine if they were real. I'm gonna explain the tech behind them, the mythology behind them. Because science. Okay, so as we all know, a typical lightsaber hilt consists of a metal cylinder between 30 to 35 centimeters in length. However, the size of individual hilts varies drastically as the weapon is tailored to its creator's specific needs and preferences. The lightsaber's mechanisms are contained within the hilt. High levels of energy generated by a high output power cell are unleashed through a series of focus lenses and energizers that convert energy into plasma. The plasma is then projected through a set of focusing crystals known as kyber crystals. That then lends the blade its properties and allows for the adjustment of blade length and power output. Usually the ideal number of kyber crystals in a lightsaber is three, even though only one is required. In Darth Maul's case, he had two kyber crystals at separate ends of his saber. This is why one end was still operating when it was blasted in half by Obi-Wan. Now, once focused by the kyber crystals, the plasma is sent through a series of field energizers and modulation circuits within the emitter matrix that further focus it, making it into a coherent beam of energy that is projected from the emitter. Now, lightsaber blades will typically extend out to about one meter before arcing back into the power cell by a superconductor and thus completing the cycle. Did you get all that? Good, because me neither. Guys, even though a lightsaber will probably never exist, even though wishful thinking, I hope they do, it is still cool to see that the people behind Star Wars, like George Lucas and whatnot, have gone in and actually explained how lightsabers work, because us diehard fans, we want to know that shit. We want to know every little detail. So now that we know how lightsabers work, let's talk about Kylo Ren's crossguard lightsaber. Now let's talk about the design of the hilt itself. Now the first thing you look at is the crudeness of it. That is something we've never seen with any lightsaber hilt. Usually with the previous lightsaber hilts that we've seen in all the Star Wars films, they're very elegant, design, clean cut, but this just looks like something I could fucking whip together in the garage in an hour. Now from what I've been reading, this design actually arcs back to old, old Jedi times and is not up to date with the current design of how hilts usually should be for Jedi Knights or Sith Lords. Now that we've touched on the topic of the hilt itself, let's talk about the inner workings of the saber and firstly the kyber crystal. Like I I mentioned before, lightsabers get their immense power and strength through the beam with the help of kyber crystals. Now, each individual that wields a lightsaber, whether it be Jedi, Sith, all have to find their own kyber crystals. Each kyber crystal is suited to their personality, their traits, their powers, abilities, and the Jedi and Sith just know, as soon as they find it, that's the kyber crystal, that is suited to them, that is gonna be part of them and their weapon of choice. Now, in the case of Kylo Ren's kyber crystal, his is actually damaged and cracked, thus causing the blade when it's submitted to become violent, sparking, and just unruly. Now, once the plasma passes through this damaged kyber crystal, it's then unstable. So once it's arcing up and back around, it has excess plasma. Hence, the cross guard. Guys, this is what I read about the other day. Those cross guards aren't there on purpose. They're actually exhaust vents for the excess plasma. This is just so geeky, I love it. And in the end, it does serve as protection, but mostly it's getting rid of excess plasma from the saber itself. And to prove that they are exhaust areas on the saber, take a look at the screen used saber itself. You can see on each exhaust port, there is extreme heat distress on the metal there. That rainbowy color, that is from extreme heat on the metal. Now let's have a look at an exhaust pipe from a car. See that exact same discoloration on the metal caused by extreme heat. There you go. So as crude and aggressive and unruly as this lightsaber is, it actually serves a purpose. It actually has added protection. And someone posted a comment after reading all this information that this lightsaber is a metaphor itself for the character of Kylo Ren. Holy shit. 
That's perfect. It's unhinged, unruly, aggressive, violent, could crack at any minute. Guys, that is the character of Kylo Ren in a nutshell. And his lightsaber clearly reflects that. Another reason why I gave The Force Awakens six geeks out of five. And that's pretty much it, guys. After reading this info about Kylo Ren's lightsaber, I had to make a video on it, talk about the tech about lightsabers, because the more you get into it, it is pretty damn geeky and gnarly. And it's just cool to read. Maybe someday we'll get actual lightsabers, but for now, we got acetone and butane lightsabers. That'll do. So thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was just geeking out for geeking out's sake. So who doesn't love geeking out? Geeking out. Try and say that really fast. Geeking out, geeking out, geeking out, geeking out, geeking out, geeking out, geeking out. If you guys do get a chance, please read up on Kylo Ren's lightsaber in Wikipedia. Wikipedia, I think it is. Because it's got some damn cool information. And leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about it. Do you think it's a good reflection of the character itself? Do you think it was clever what the writers did? As always, thanks very much for watching guys and your continuing support. And until next time, geeks, always remember, cosplayers do it best.